you're not here, you're missing out. This this show. Hey everybody, I'm Friday, and if I love wrestling, you love wrestling. Welcome to the Women on Wednesday. Hey, you know, we ended off the month of February. We've been talking to a lot of women this month. If you saw the trend, I won't tell you. But if you saw what was going on, it was going. So we got an up and comer here from the Texas area, the first graduate of Lions Pride, Texas. We have Mia Friday. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Me- let me ask my first question, then I ask that question. So, Mia, the first question that we always ask before we even start is, "Why do you love wrestling, or what started your love for wrestling?" Um, started my love for wrestling is just um, I think just growing up around it my whole life because my grandpa always watched wrestling, my dad always watched wrestling, so I was just always around wrestling, and I was just just naturally like drawn to it, and just growing up and just seeing it on my TV, I just I don't, I don't really know. You just like, it's just my thing. You know, you just watch wrestling your whole life and then it's just, it's all I want to do. You know, it just becomes your dream. It becomes your dream and you're starting on your dream early. You're 16. Um, how did you get in? I mean, your grandpa got you into it, but how did you get into training? Because, you know, it's not many that, you know, out here at your age wrestling and people know them. Like, I'm in the Midwest, but I've heard about you for a while. So how did you get started training and everything? Um, I never really liked the idea of training early. It was just that my mom found out about a wrestling school that was really close to where I lived. And she was just like, hey, I mean, this is a wrestling school if you want to really do wrestling. And I'm like, okay, sure. And I just happened to be 13 whenever that all went down. You know, it's just how things ended up just working out. (laughs) Oh, shout out to your mom for getting that into you. Uh, Now, Mia Friday. Got to ask, how did you come up with the name? Because, you know, you see a name, Mia, I saw Friday on there, and I'm like, how did she come up with this name? Is there a story behind that? Um, I don't think any really creative story around it. I was just, around the time I was supposed to debut, and I'm like, I got to come up with something. I want something that's marketable, something that's different, something that's not just, like, every other generic women's wrestler name. And, like, I just, just Friday, you know, because it's the best day of the week. You can, oh. like... <laughs> Okay. about it all this and that you know it's marketable it's smart i can i can do the whole friday is just around the corner thing i can have all the catchphrases and everything and so it's just been working out for me that way okay did you say friday's around the corner yeah that's on my shirt man well i, don't <laughs> have, shirt. I have like my like my best-selling shirt it's like an all-black shirt and it's like friday just around the corner because that's been like my little catchphrase i've been adding on at the end of promos okay okay i could dig that now we had Another young person on here, uh, Billy Starks. You know, we asked about how does she balance school life and wrestling life. How are you doing that? Um, being, are you in school right now still? Yes, I'm actually supposed to graduate with my associate's degree. So, yeah, I don't really. It's just it. it it's probably been my biggest struggle. My biggest struggle trying to figure out how to balance um, just school and training, gym, and then I'm also in the whole doing this whole rock band thing and it's just all about managing your time and it means you also have to just like sacrifice doing other fun things like hanging out with friends and stuff because you need to do your homework and you know it's just you just got to manage your time and prioritize what you're going to do but it's it's something that I'm still learning how to manage but yeah it's been just been I'm still making straight A's so I'm I'm figuring it out (laughs) did you say he's about to get your associate's degree Yes, sir. Associate's degree at 16, people, did you? So so you're like a genius, a, a, a brain work. I, I don't know if I'm a genius. I just be working really hard all the time. <laughs> oh, you mentioned a rock band. Um, I don't know much. I listen to maybe a little rock. Maybe 2% of my music is rock. Uh, tell, tell me about the rock band. So, um... Like maybe two years ago, I started going to this music school and then I met a bunch of these other guys who played instruments and everything. And then I eventually left the music school because, you know, like I was too busy with like training and wrestling and traveling and everything. But 
uh, me and like two of the other guys that I met from that school, we went ahead and formed like a punk rock band and it's been way successful than I ever thought it would be. And we've been doing maybe like two or three shows a month locally. And, you know, it's just, we've just been having fun with it. You know, it's nothing too crazy. We're not trying to make it big or like become super successful, but it's just a fun little thing. And you don't want to just do wrestling, have your whole life consumed by wrestling. You want to put all your eggs in one basket because then like if wrestling starts getting hard, then like you don't have anything else to like make you feel better. You're like if you're stressed out about wrestling and you only do wrestling, then like what else can you do if you don't have like another hobby, you know? So it's just been band been doing the whole band is something that's just really fun and just like a little side thing. It's not super duper like important in my life. I'm not trying to make it big in music, but it's just been fun. Okay. It's not super duper important to try to make it big. So let's say you make it big. You know, and they came to you said, we want you to do this rock band, you know, big contract, but you got to stop the wrestling. Who was your choice? It's it's always going to be wrestling over everything, man. Like, there's so many hobbies that I've done that I've ended up quitting just because just my love of wrestling is greater. And sometimes I feel like my love for wrestling is just, like, maybe, like, Maybe it's a little too much sometimes because I'll just like cancel everything that I'm doing, stop everything that I'm doing, like like no one else matters, nothing else matters besides wrestling kind of thing. But I always pick wrestling over everything just because I don't love anything more than I love wrestling, you know? Uh, let me, do you have a, a deal with wrestling over everything? Oh, <laughs> No, but I should after I just said that. Oh my goodness. I'm just a hey, wrestling over everything. I know you watch these. <laughs> it's me a Friday. Hit her up. The link is in the bottom. Hit her up. I'm just saying. She just said it's wrestling over everything. Sign her up. All right. Oh, <laughs> I had to put that there when you said. It. I'm like, yo, is she with them or was that a plug? <laughs> like doing promo for them? But no, you need a shirt or something. They need to put you on the page. Um. So. You faced a lot of people. You've been all through Texas. Have you been outside of Texas yet? Like maybe Oklahoma? No, but I am booked in Arkansas next month. So that'll be my first ever time wrestling out of state. But right now, no. Okay. So being in state, you know, seeing you on the reality of wrestling, seeing you uh on the independent circuits. You get you got <laughs> uh Amber Rodriguez has been posting about you. Um <laughs> I got to ask, who's been one of your toughest opponents that you faced so far? Mm. Tough as in how? Just overall challenge you to be better in the ring. Um, a tough opponent where you wasn't, couldn't actually go with him. So, yeah, maybe two of them. First person who challenged you overall in the ring, pushed you to where you didn't think you could go. And then somebody who you just wasn't prepared for and you was like, oh, I don't well, nah, don't don't say that. So let's just say someone who who, who pushed you to be better in the ring. Um, let's go to the second. Someone who pushed me to be better. I'm gonna go with Roxy just because whenever I wrestled her, like I was still like super duper green and like I didn't really like step out of my comfort zone and really try new things. I just had like my three moves and that was it. But whenever um, I worked Roxy, she was, she like gave me moves. Like, and I, I still use the moves to this day, but she was like, can you do a bicycle kick? And I'm like, no. And she's like, okay, you're going to do a bicycle kick. And so like, and I still use that bicycle kick now. And it's just like, um, she taught me how to just like have more fun putting together my matches. Like I don't need to follow the exact structure that I've been learning at training. Like you can add a little bit of like, flavor and different ups and downs in the in the matches and everything and like how you do psychology in a match and then somebody who I was not prepared for Charity Kane that is by far <laughs> the hardest person man or woman doesn't matter she will hit harder than absolutely anybody I train with all dudes and no one n none of them will ever 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 compare to Charity <laughs> Kane like she I just we and we, we wrestled at least like three or four times and every single time, it does. I, I never got used to the feeling of how hard she hits. 
bro. She inspired me to finally learn how to just lay it in. I'm still learning how to lay it in, but now she just encourages me more because, like, I just, I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, I felt, <laughs> I, felt, I felt like I was doing a hardcore match, man. <laughs> but for real, yeah, she, but Charity's so sweet, though. I love her. She's so funny and she's just great to be around. Charity can't always be saying stuff like this. We're going to bring her on here. I don't know when it's going to be because of the way the schedule is, but we're going to talk to her. Uh, and I see her be laying into people. So, you know, we're we going to see what she's about. But you mentioned Roxy. How did it, how does it feel like learning from someone who kind of went on the same path before you started so young also, and now so many, so many good things are happening to her? Oh my God. I love Roxy so much. Just I met her the first time I met her, I was either 13 or 14. She was um she was wrestling on a show that I was like doing like ring crew for. And like the second the moment from the moment that I met her, she was just so sweet to me. And she was all like, here's my number. If you need anything, just let me know. And she just she just like took me under her wing from the start. And it's just it's so good to have like somebody who's been in your shoes before because it's so challenging to be like a women's wrestler at such a young age and you feel like there's nobody around you that you can go to there's nobody that's like been through what you've been through but she's like done it all and she's proved that like you can come from like this age and like from this place and then you can like excel and become world champion and everything and she just inspires me and she motivates me and um i just love her so much i love her personality i love who she is like as a human she's she's just so sweet like if if anyone ever cancels Roxy, they have, she does nothing wrong. There's absolutely nothing to cancel Roxy for, ever, ever. <laughs> That's what I gotta say. I yeah, know Roxy, one of my favorite people. Let's keep going. <laughs> Mia, uh, 16, before matches, what, 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 what gets you hype? What's, what's your hype music? You got any hype music? Um, Hype music? Obviously, Nicki Minaj. My song is Nicki Minaj, and you know what? I haven't. I actually haven't been listening to um, any music lately. Before my matches, I've been so nervous before my matches. I don't even be listening to music. I just be like, ah. but um, yeah, I love metal music. That might be my favorite. I love um, my favorite band is Slipknot. I've only seen them once in person, but um, I just I adore metal music. I wanted to have metal music as like like a metal song as my theme song but just i don't i don't know at all how i would make that work but uh yeah i just um oh number one way that i get pumped before a match caffeine because i'm probably gonna fall asleep if i don't drink some caffeine before my matches what type of caffeine um you know monsters bang just, energy drink yes i don't I'm not too fond of energy drinks. Uh, <laughs> I get jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> but I got, to, <laughs> I got to ask you, uh, Mia, uh, you said you want to come out to a metal song. You you have a little band. You got a band that you put together. I won't say little, but you got a band you put together. You know, you ever thought about y'all doing your interest music? You know, people keep asking me that. They're like, you know, you have like a whole band, right? Why don't you just make your own song? But I'm like, if... But and then you know, <laughs> but we're a whole different we're punk rock and I'm me on Friday. I'm like Nicki Minaj, yada yada yada, girl boss. I can't just suddenly come out to it like this loud punk music unless I just I I'd have to change what I'm doing, you know. You could uh switch it over, you know. Nicki did some punk rock. <laughs> but it's, Friday, it's Friday around the corner, you know, while y'all doing your punk rock. I'm just saying, look into it. Wrestling's a business. <laughs> Promote yourself all the way through. Get money, you know. <laughs> now. Yeah, I'm going to ask it. I always ask this question, so let me lean in a bit before I ask this. Because I got to see, because you say wrestling over everything. So we get ready to find out. <laughs> Stone Cold or The Rock? Oh. Why are you asking like that? Like there's a right and wrong answer to this. <laughs> it's not. I've been doing this for two years. Everybody's been on. Thunder Rose has been asked. Amber Rodriguez, Savannah Evans, 
Faye Jackson. Everybody comes on and gets asked the same question. There's no right or wrong answer, but I do need to know Stone Cold or The Rock. It's no right or wrong answer, but, you know, I have my notions after you make your choice. <laughs> what did Amber say? I, uh, that's for Amber to know. I mean, this is your question, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. no. We we can't we don't give no help on that. It's no right or wrong answer. The rock because that man can rap, that man can wrestle, he's an entertainer, he's an actor. You good in my book, man. You know. <laughs> so, but, but. I mean, I like Stone Cold too, but you know, when people pick the rock, it just makes me feel a little, a little warm inside. So, you know, I, I'm glad about that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you said you're about to leave getting out of Texas next month to go to Arkansas. Anywhere else you, you plan on trying to get or you want to get to outside of Texas, or is it everywhere? Yeah, man, everywhere. What? I've been um trying to get to do and find the time to do. I'm just writing down all these promotions in every single state. And then whenever I find the time, I'm just gonna write an email to like at least two promotions in every single state in the US. Cause like, I just wanna put myself out there, you know. Like I feel like I may be a little too young to try and just get myself like really, really out there like that, but there's no point in just not trying, you know. Like it's because I've seen like everybody around me is um, making all these trips to Oklahoma and all these little like promotions outside of Texas. I'm like, I could, I could try that, you know, like, it wouldn't hurt. There's like, there's these girls that are like, like what, like a few months into the business and they're already going out of state. So like, I can, I can try if I've been doing it for like, what, like two or three years and I can, I can, I can see what might happen. See what's out there. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but usually people watch these and you may get some DMs or some emails. I don't know nothing about it, but people <laughs> do. I, I, I see a trend going, so don't be shocked if somebody hits you and it's like, hey, it's like, hey, you know, that's just me. So, me, I got to ask you when you're in the ring and the fans are watching. What's the energy you're giving off to them? What will we take it home? Because you know they say on the independent scene, you got to take let let the fans go home and have something to remember you by. What what we remembering by about Mia when we get done watching the show? You know what? A lot of people have been telling like like my energy, you know, because I I don't I'm not really I'm not the best wrestler i'm not i'm not i don't do all this and that i'm not really uh flashy or anything but just um i the way i like interact at the merge tables before and after the show and just the way i interact with the crowd um and like I, and it, like every single moment that i get in my matches i want to make eye contact with some and make eye contact with somebody in the audience i want to talk to somebody in the audience i want to do something with the audience you know because i feel like the audience is part of the match too. You know, you can't just be solely focused on your opponent because the crowd came to see you wrestle, you know? So every little chance that I get, I want to like look at them, talk to them, high five them. And when I'm at the merch tables, like act like you're genuinely interested and in that you don't just want their money. And just um, people just tell me that I'm just like, uh, just a sweet person, you know, just my personality. And I just want people to remember just like, just the positivity that I'm trying to bring to wrestling. Mm. When you turn 18 character switch, that's when you go with the punk rock music that you and your band make for your entrance music. And you just, you don't be nice to people no more. Just skip everything over. It'll be a great character dynamic. Just um, put yeah. that in the back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> So, back to because you said wrestling over everything. I feel like I asked about your wrestling. You know, watching wrestling. Who's some of your favorite people to watch on, like, in the big companies right now? We're gonna ask about the big companies. Who's some of your favorite people to watch growing up? Man, I feel embarrassed people ask this question because they don't understand how young I am and the people that I actually grew up watching. <laughs> because um, the night that I decided that I wanted to be a wrestler, I was ten years old. 
and it was WrestleMania 32 with Sasha versus Charlotte versus uh, Becky. I was 10 years old and just Sasha Banks, that's got to be just the number one reason that I wanted to be a wrestler. You know, just everything about her is just her passion and it's just the hardest. I just, I've always idolized her, man. She's just amazing. And um, I, a lot of people like are guilty of like adding too much of who they idolize into their wrestling character. So I try my hardest not to act like Sasha, but just um, sometimes like, I feel like like the whole reason I'm here is because of her, you know? And then like, that, that was, that was the reason like I decided I wanted to be a wrestler, but like just growing up watching wrestling, I vote John Cena, John Cena. Um, the first match that I can remember watching was in 2013. I think I don't, I might've been like, like eight or nine. I don't, cause I was born in 2005. So I, I, I was, it was before I turned 10 and John Cena versus Ryback. I pay back 2013. That was the first ever match that I watched. The three stages of hell match. And so, um, man, I hated Ryback. I don't know why, but I just hated Ryback, bro. I could not stand him. And then I just love John Cena. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But yeah, John Cena and Sasha Banks. Those are my... <laughs> hey, that right there lets me all I need to know. You're a real wrestling fan. <laughs> Ryback, this is just the interview she hated your character. Please. Please, nobody clip that out, fam. My goodness. <laughs> no type of ride back beat. John Cena. I don't have. Did I watch that match? When you said it, I was like, I remember the match, but I don't know if I watched it. That might have been a time that I was going away from WWE. 13 was like a good year in wrestling. I just remember. It's just some, a match that I remember. I don't know if anybody else even really cares about that match, but it's just the first match that I remember. I remember the match just. Uh. That that was right before everything started to ramp up for me in terms like right after that. Then after that, you got everything. Then in 2013, 2014, I felt like that was a good year for WWE. Mm -hmm. um, uh, two more questions for our last segment. I always ask this. If you could face three people you haven't faced, like three dream matches, Ooh. who's on your radar? Realistic or unrealistic? Let's go with three unrealistic and then three realistic. Because um, everybody always asks that. Okay, unrealistic. I want to wrestle Seth Rollins and Candice LeRae. I hope she comes back to wrestling after she does the whole baby thing here. And then um, Sasha Banks. Yeah, Sasha Banks for sure. And then um, for more realistic like goals that I'm trying to set to actually happen like um soon is Billy Starks, Lainey Luck, and I don't know if this can happen, but Athena. So those are those are some some people that are not only really like based out of Texas, but they come to Texas a lot. So I think I could try and get a match with them sometime soon. Yo. I'm glad you said uh, one name because I can take this part and I can clip what Billy Stark said and that match should be able to happen because I, I asked her the same thing. I said, you know, me or Friday, she said, hey, we down in Texas. We can see, you know, so hey, I think that a good go. match. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all can face now and then. Look, I'm, I'm saying, people, it could be a whole little rivalry. I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Make it happen. Uh there's some places down there, Keeper, uh, Thunder Rosa. You got WrestleMania weekend coming up, you know. <laughs> uh, who else? We? It's too much, but hey, that should be a match that happens. I've been pushing for that match. You said <laughs> Steph Rollins. You said also, oh, so I'll be real with you. When you said Sasha Banks is your inspiration, you know, I love Sasha too. I like everything about her, from the pink hair to the red hair to the blue hair. I mean, not the pink hair, from the red hair to the blue hair, you know. Her run on SmackDown. If uh, if the people look at the page older, you know, there's a lot of Sasha on there. You know, I had to stop. But the way she's just evolving in the ring and everything, it's a good thing. 
she'd be down in the Texas area training, you know. I mean, yeah, I don't know, maybe I don't know. Hybrid, and I remember I went hybrid one time too. So we're like, we've been like, we've almost been in the same places at the same time. Like, oh, which, oh, don't, don't try and say that. Don't try to hype me up. Don't try to get me excited about something that isn't going to happen until like 10, 15 years. Things happen sooner than that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you never know. Clip this out. I'm talking to myself, so y'all watching this, I'm letting myself know. Clip that out. Put that up. Start some streams, Terry, you know what I'm saying? It could happen within the next year for me or Friday, you know? Hey, shout out to the boss, Sasha Banks. Oh, we're going to get that to happen. It got to happen. Yeah, I'm going to get you hyped. You're going to be like, hey, he said it was going to happen, and it happened. Uh, before what's going on with Amber? Amber, you know, she she's been going at you. She talking about beating you up and everything on Instagram, talking about you getting bad grades. You know, she she doing her new her new per, her her persona making appointments with people. Amber, <laughs> you, you're not outrageous with that, but how you feel about her? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny man. every morning when I open my face my my Facebook or my Twitter, my Instagram, whatever. She got something, man. I, you know, I appreciate it because I have never um, done a program or done like a rivalry with anybody where they were so consistent with talking mess about me. Like, I just love that. Like, she puts so much effort every single day to reminding people how much she's going to uh, beat me up or make it a point, whatever. She, she's a whole character. I, I like, I think she might be um, the most dedicated to her character out of anybody else that I worked because like a lot of these girls they'll just be like oh I'm just a women's wrestler like they don't have like the whole character or anything Amber got the whole like like 1980s wrestler gimmick like the whole like Dennis and the firefighters she's a she has like one of those like those original gimmicks where it's like um something in the real world but it has that little wrestling flip on it I just love it I love her whole thing and she she goes all out with the whole character all the time I love like that commitment just that 24 7 just Cause like I honestly like Mia Friday doesn't like, like her character is just that, like Friday. My my character is Friday. She has like this whole thing with like levels and layers to it, and she can do the whole spots with the whole like syringe and everything. And she has the gloves, and she can do. She has such a diverse like she can do anything with the character. So I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be tired of her sometimes watching the match. I'm like, she's really into this character right here, like. Her and who's the Rache Chanel? You know, somebody else she faced mm -hmm. on her character. My goodness. Uh oh. <laughs> <clears throat> we do this thing at, at when we get towards the end where we call the put yourself over moment. This is where we ask you to give everybody your social media, anything you got coming up, ways they can support you. You know, if you got a t shirt store, uh, how they can get the Fridays around the corner shirt. We just ask for you to put yourself over. Okay, so my Instagram, Facebook, it's Mia Friday. Y'all can go follow me there. And you can message me on any one of the platforms to buy my shirts. I have shirts, bracelets, stickers, 8 by 10 So y'all can hit me up about that. Got a YouTube channel too. And um, yeah, just go follow me and support me because social media in this day and age is so important for independent wrestling. So just that one little button, just clicking that button means everything. Ooh, that is true. That is true. Um, Mia, you told everything. I got to ask you. This, this is just a random question. Uh, all the links that she just said will be in the bottom of all our videos. If you own the podcast or on the YouTube, just go on the bottom. You can see all the links that she just mentioned. I got to ask you. I saw something you posted. Um, <laughs> and we're going to close out here. I shouldn't be asking this. So I saw you say something about uh, you had to get a good grade on the test or your mom told you that you weren't going to be able to. <laughs> to <laughs> you, uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I mean, it's out there. If the public seen it, they could see. I just want to know, did you do good on the test or is it coming up? Are you good? I am good. Thank you for asking. I'm doing fine. <laughs> I'm <laughs> for your, if you must know, I am doing fine. I'm struggling, but I'm doing fine. Just want to make sure, you know, keep the grades up. Make sure. Everything. <laughs> I 
I saw the post. I said, oh, man, not not great this year. We're not going to be able to even do this interview. Oh, my goodness. Here you <laughs> go. Um, but we got it. We here. Mia, I appreciate you giving us this time. Well, all right, I'll ask this. This bring everything together for the month. It's the end of Black History Month. Uh, how does it feel being a, a woman in wrestling? How does it feel what? It's it's the end of Black History Month. How does it feel being a woman in wrestling right now? Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? My whole life, I did not know that I was like categorized as black because my mama kept on telling me like, oh, you mixed. You're not black, you mixed. And then, and then all of a sudden when Black History Month rolls around, people are putting me all on like the posters and they're shouting me out for Black History Month. I'm like, what? Me? Me, <laughs> so I'm light. I'm like, I'm so light compared to the rest of you. <laughs> but no, nah, that's you light. I'm light. Come on now. <laughs> but being mixed, uh, that's how you categorize. So w when you saw yourself on the posters, it, it shocked you. Yes, I'm like, first of all, like, like from the way I've grew up, I've always been like, I've always grew up thinking, oh, I'm too light. Nobody knows that I'm black. But now that I realize it's kind of obvious that like I'm mixed or something like my mom was like, oh, you are so light. You are so light. You could pass as white. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, they could call you. I mean, people think I'm mixed, but I'm not. But, you know, <laughs> they may call you mixed. I don't know. Mm, Texas area. I don't know. Gotta look at that. <laughs> it's different down there. Uh, but guys, we thank everybody for coming to watch. You can all, if you're on the YouTube, go to the podcast version. If you're on the podcast, come to the YouTube, watch it. You know, as we always do, highlight video. Seeing that at the beginning, you can see that at the end. Watch that. Follow me on Friday. Click the links. Give a follow on YouTube. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to YouTube. Follow right now. Because you never know, those, those follows add up. They do add up. But like I always say, Mia, thank you for giving us this time. We appreciate you being here. Can't wait to see you do some. Oh, you going to be at WrestleMania? Yes. You taking bookings? Yes. She's taking bookings. Yeah, I got to be like every other independent wrestler on social media. Guys, I'm available for Mania Weekend. Y'all let me know. Y'all hit me up. I'm available. <laughs> So hey, we got the <laughs> we, hey, we got the but she is available for many a week book as yo. Uh, that was hilarious. Because everybody is doing that. You got to make sure you never mind, don't start this. Okay. Um put your little poster together, put on there on the base that you're available with your email address. But I'm gonna get out of here because Mia's gonna get me in trouble. But thank you for being here, Mia. I'm trading, and like I always say, if I love wrestling and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. It's too sweet. Ah, for the coach. I mean, I love I wrestling and you love wrestling, then we. <laughs>